Hi, this is Evangelist Roger Allen inviting you to this evangelistic series, Time is Running Out, starting from the 26th of March to the 9th of April, 2022. We are inviting persons living in Canaan, Crom Point, Lowlands, Kambi, all fields, Buku, Chauvin, Susolans, Bonacord, and Mount Pleasant. We are asking you to invite your friends and come out in your numbers at the Canaan SDA Church, right at Guy Street Extension. We know that persons are going through all kinds of trials. We are here to present the Holy Spirit to you, to heal your wounds and to give you the assurance that tomorrow will be bright. Just in case you are out of the country, join us on Mount Pleasant SDA Church YouTube channel, Canaan SDA Church YouTube channel. Join us on Bonacord SDA Church YouTube channel. Lots of prizes, lovely singing, lovely gifts, powerful Bible-based preaching coming from the evangelist touched by God. Come and hear subjects like, if God puts you on hold, don't hang up. Come and hear subjects like this, is it you will be experiencing a touch from god you will be experiencing a life transforming event time is running out well good morning once again and welcome to another episode of whispering hope again with us on this tuesday morning is elder jacqueline gordon and andy david to help us bring insight into this quarter we had a brand new quarter study and we're studying the book of Genesis for this quarter. And so we are going to be getting into the book of beginnings. And so elders, I want to welcome you this morning as we prepare to get into our specific lesson study for today. Elder Jacqueline Gordon, welcome. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Happy to be here as usual. And Elder David, Andy, welcome. Hey, thank you. Happy to be here. As we begin a brand new quarter, I trust that we're going to have a real inspiring time as we proceed through this quarter. Amen. Amen. All right. So we're all covered the blood of Christ Jesus by the backgrounds that we have here. And so um, today we're going to have Elder David read for us our memory text and Elder Jacqueline Gordon is going to give us our opening prayer. So we start with the memory text, Elder David, and then Elder Gordon give us our prayer for this morning. Memory text is taken from Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, New King James Version. It says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Let us pray, Almighty God and our Heavenly Father. Indeed, we are so thankful for the gift of life. And Lord, as we embark upon your word, a new study, dear Father, Lord, we know nothing without you. And so we ask that your Holy Spirit just condescend and all of us here today, even those who are listening and viewing, grant us your in divine interpretation so that we all will be fed from the manna from and high and be fit vessels to continue your biddings in this world. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Amen, amen. Thank you, elders, for the prayer and for the memory text. So we're looking at Genesis for this entire quarter. And for this week, the name of the lesson is the creation. So on an overall scale, we're looking at the creation. And for us, this Tuesday morning, our lesson topic is entitled, Hey, the Sabbath. Now, elders, you know that we have looked at the Sabbath on many occasions, even on Whispering Hope. And today, here it comes again, in the context of the creation and in the broader context of the entire book of Genesis that we're going to be looking at for this quarter, we look again at the Sabbath. Now, yesterday's lesson looked at the creation in that the account in Genesis 1 and Genesis 2. But today, elders, we want to home in on the Sabbath. Now, there's a lot that could be said, but there's also very little that could be said about the Sabbath in that it's there, God created it, and that's it. And we could pack up and, and go home and close the lesson for today. But let's just look and see how we can assist those who are watching, and even for ourselves and for the glorification of God, as to how we can bring out some highlights or some points in today's lesson. All right? So we're going to look at the text because I want to go to the text. Uh, very early and so we can have that foundation which we can launch off from 
in studying today's topic of the Sabbath. So, Elder Gordon, could you read for us Genesis chapter 2, verses 2 and 3? And then Elder David, maybe you could recite Exodus 28 to 11, or read it for us. All right, so Elder Gordon, read for us Genesis 2, 2 and 3, and Elder David, take for us Exodus 20, verses 8 to 11. The New King James Version, Genesis chapter 2, verses 2 and 3. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had made. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because that in it he had rested from all his work, which God created and made. Okay, Exodus 20, 8 to 11, from the New International Version. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work. Neither you, nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your male or female servant, nor your animals, nor, nor any foreigner residing in your towns. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them. But he rested on the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. All right, excellent. Thank you, elders, for reading those passages of scripture. So the question comes now to both of you. I'll give Elder David the first stab at it. Having read Exodus 28 to 11, speaking about Sabbath and Genesis 2, 2 to 2 and 3, speaking about God blessed and hallowed and sanctified at the end of creation. The question is, why is the seventh day Sabbath related to creation? Or is it related to creation? And how does this connection impact how we keep the Sabbath? Elder David? I think it is quite clear cut right there in the passages of scripture that we read. And I will just reread Genesis 2, 2 and 3. It says, by the seventh day, God had finished the work he had been doing. So on the seventh day, he rested from all his work. Then God blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Because on it, on it he rested from all the work of creation that he had made. So after God would have spent six days creating, on the seventh day, God rested. And God looked back at all that he had done he reflected and he reflected on the goodness on the value of creation the sabbath is related to creation in the sense that it is after god would have created he rested and he reflected what does that say to us how do we relate to that now on sabbath just like god rested and reflected on the value and the goodness of his creation we too when it comes a Sabbath, ought to stop and reflect on God's creation and on the goodness and on the value of His creation. So on Sabbath, when we stop and reflect, first of all, it reminds us every Sabbath who our Creator is. It re we are reminded every Sabbath that everything we have and enjoy was created for us by God. And then that should cause us to want to worship him. While studying this, I pause to remember animals and all of the trees and the vegetation and everything. But God also created me. And God saw his creation as valuable, as good. So I had to reflect to that, look, I am created by God and I am valuable in the eyes of God. And I am not the product or I am not a result of any big bang. Sabbath reminds me of that. And, and, and it caused me to want to worship and to honor and to praise God. Sister Gordon, your take on the Sabbath and creation, and Elder David gave a pretty verbose answer and pretty concise as well. Your take, Elder Gordon. Yes. The Sabbath memorializes God's creation. And it was a wonderful thing just to think of God creating everything the heavens the earth the fountains of water and at the end of each day god said it is good and then he made man on the sixth day he also created marriage 
was instituted and on the seventh day, God rested from all his work. There was completion, elders. There was nothing lacking. God made everything for man's benefit. And on the seventh day, the Bible says that he rested from all his work. He blessed the seventh day. He sanctified the day. He set it apart for holy use, holy convocation, holy gathering. And it is a day just to give God praise and thanks for all that he has done for us and even what he is continuing to do in and through our lives. Thank you, Elder Gordon. Thank you, Elder David, for that response. Yes, we see that indeed, that God set apart that day. He hallowed it. There are some, though, who have a question or some who would say that, okay, God created in six days and then he created, as the Bible says, on the seventh day, a Sabbath day, a day of rest. Okay, we see that. But it doesn't say, this is what some people are saying now, it doesn't say, elders, that that day was made for all of us. He was made for Adam and Eve. And some people have the misnomer. They say misnomer that Adam and Eve were Jews or they were some special class of people. And so what I'm getting at is that some people say, yes, I see it there in Genesis, but is it really for me today? How would you respond to someone who say, well, I don't think it's for me today because clearly in the biblical account, it was for those other people. What do you say? Elder God, let's start with you. I believe that all who call themselves Christians would say today that they are followers of Christ. Let us put Jews aside and let us put whomever. All Christians would identify themselves as followers of Christ. Do we all believe that? Yes. So I would like to turn to Luke, which is the New Testament. Just to give us passage here. Luke chapter 4, and that's the New Testament again. And the Bible says from verse 16, and we're talking about Jesus. And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And now we know here custom will have, you can change that word to tradition. So his custom, his tradition was that he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. Now, what I find is so striking here. Jesus went into the synagogue. Jesus actually preached on his first sermon. After his baptism and his temptation and so on, his first sermon was taken from Isaiah, the book of Isaiah, where he said that the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He had sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and the recovering of sight to the blind and to set at liberty them that are bruised. And so we see here that Jesus went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day because it was a customary thing for him to do. We see Jesus here in the New Testament. This is not the Old Testament now. So it is saying here that the Sabbath, a time when we set aside just to think about God's creative power, and as in the sense that we know that we, the sin, this world was marred by sin, we can also contemplate his redemptive power, the fact that he came to redeem us. And Jesus' first message was preached on the Sabbath. And he said that he has come to set at liberty those who are bound, those who are shackled in sin. Jesus says his ministry is to reach the poor, is to set at liberty those who are bound. And I know that through the message of Jesus, through the good news of salvation, men and women can be set free and continue to walk as Jesus walked, that is in obedience to the Sabbath, which memorializes his creative and redemptive power. His creative and redemptive power. Thank you so much, Elder Gordon, for that response. Elder David, what's your take? You said that there are some folks who would say that the Sabbath was made for the Jews. Now, when God made the Sabbath, God first invited Adam and Eve 
to rest on the Sabbath day. Adam and Eve were not Jews. The Jews did not come into being as God's special people until hundreds of years after. So the Sabbath was not made for Jews. The Sabbath was made for man. And the Bible said that. The Bible says that in Mark 2.27, it says, Then he said, Jesus speaking, the Sabbath was made for man, and not man for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. So the Sabbath was not made for the Jews. It was made for man. Adam and Eve were not Jews. Now, we established earlier, and Sister God made reference now, that the Sabbath memorializes creation. It reminds us that God is our creator. My question to folks like those would be, now, is it only the Jews who needs to be reminded, who need to be reminded on a weekly basis that they were created? Did God only create the Jews? So that is only the Jews need a reminder that God is their creator every week? I said, no, God created all of us. And so all of us, Jews or Gentiles, need to remember that God is our creator and the Sabbath serves that purpose. So it's not for the Jews only, but for all of us. Excellent, Elder. Thank you so much for that. Indeed, it was made for all of us. And the text which you made reference to, Mark 2, 27, it says that Sabbath was made for man. And it is interesting to know that the original language or the word translated for man there is anthropos, which is basically Adam, which is mankind. And so it was made for not specifically Adam in the Garden of Eden, as, as opposed not for Eve, but it was made for Adam because Adam was God's first creation. And out of Adam and Eve came all mankind. So it was made for mankind. And so thank you for bringing up that text, Elder David. Um, let's just transition a little here. We're going to look at the fact that we have said it before, Elder Gordon and yourself, Elder David, have said that uh, God finished his work. Uh, in terms of creation, God finished his work and he made the day for man. That finished work that God has done, when we look at the fact that God has finished his work, does it or does it not or what hope does it give us as Christians who are, who are following Christ now, knowing that he can and has done a finished work in terms of creation, what do we look forward to in hope that God is going to fulfill in terms of his finished work? I mean, we are, we are maybe a work in process right now, but let's talk about that. Elder David? When God made the Sabbath and he gave it to Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, there was perfection. They were sinless. But then after that, sin came. All right, so there's need for redemption. There was need for uh, a plan to save us. As a matter of fact, God created the plan of salvation, the Bible says, for the world. And then that plan instantaneously kicked in. Now, God, the Bible tells us, after he created, creation was finished. I would like us to read here in Exodus 40 and verse 33. He says, Moses, then Moses set up the courtyard around the tabernacle and altar put up the curtain at the entrance to the courtyard and Moses finished the work. Now that text made reference to the fact that Moses, God gave Moses command to build a sanctuary. And the Bible tells us Moses followed through on that command and Moses finished the work of building the sanctuary. Now, I said before that after man's sin, man needed salvation. God the the plan of salvation. And Moses finished that thing. Now, God finished the work of creation. Because sin came, the need arose for recreation. The image God created us with, the image of God in man was damaged. That image needed to be recreated. And that had to be created for the Son of Jesus Christ, who was to come and die for us. The sanctuaries and its services taught the plan of salvation, taught us the fact that Jesus was going to come 
and die for us. When once we accept Jesus as our Lord and personal Savior, we, our hearts are converted and we are now set on our way to receiving that salvation. When once we stay in that relationship, Jesus is going to come a second time. And then that work of recreation, which would have started when we accept Jesus as our personal Savior, will be completed in us. So the work of creation was finished, and God is going to finish the work of recreation in us. Excellent. Wonderful. So uh, the work of creation is finished. God is going to recreate in us and finish that work. And so we have something to look forward to, Elder God. We have something glorious to look forward to. How does that make you feel as a follower of God, Elder God, in terms of knowing that there's something to look forward to in the finished work in Christ? Amen, amen. It's a wonderful experience. It's something wonderful, hopeful to look forward to. A Sabbath is a celebration time. When we think of the heavens, the earth, when we think of night and day, when we think of that vast sheep, seashore that can only come thus far and it rolls back. It, when we think about the atoms, molecules, when we think about our digestive system, when we think about all that goes on in this world that God created, I am telling you the Sabbath, we all should look forward to the Sabbath with great anticipation, a time when we celebrate worship, just fall down at the feet of Jesus and say, thank you, Lord. Thank you for being my creator. And as Elder David alluded to after sin, that whole redemption plan where God is recreating in us and one day as Isaiah chapter 66 verse 10 tells us that God says from one new moon to another from one flesh to another shall all flesh come and worship me so what we see here elder is that in heaven and I think Revelation chapter 14 speaks to it he says these are they we enter to the gates those that have kept the commandments of Christ, which the Sabbath is the fourth of the commandment and have the testimony of Jesus. So in heaven, elder, we will be celebrating the Sabbath. Why? We will have reason to, because apart from God creating everything, the angels now will have to fold their wings because we who would have been redeemed will be celebrating God's redemptive power. What a day. That will be. Amen, indeed. Okay, we are going to be saved by grace. Isn't that so? That's correct. Yes. And I just want to share that grace undeserved is unmerited favor. But God gives it to us as a gift. And we see very early when we examine the Sabbath that the concept of grace existed right there in the garden of eden just after creation now look at this the bible tells us that after god finished his work he rested our adam and eve rested on the sabbath day understand that adam and eve god rested after a long week of work adam and eve were invited to rest adam and eve neither or needed rest because they did not work God had worked for them already, but yet God invited them to come and enjoy the blessing of the Sabbath rest. All right, so the concept of grace could be seen even then. And so Sabbath is a time, not when we give anything to God, but in God and he calls us to rest and to receive a blessing. Wonderful, beautiful elder. Thank you for that interjection there. Yes, indeed. And you know, the thing is, we, we don't do, or should I say, how should I put it? We don't do what the commandment says in terms of the Sabbath. It says, for in six days you should finish your work. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work. How many of us finish all of our work in six days? We always come to the, the sixth day and we still have things to do. We still have uh, loose ends to tap. We still have, you know, stuff to do. But the beautiful thing about it is that God still allows us to enter into his rest, into the Sabbath day, into that physical rest, into that space and time in which we can come apart and forget about the kids of the world. But the point I wanted to make is that 
God can finish the work and he has finished the work in his creation. And as Elder David and Elder God rightly said, we have to look forward to redemption, towards salvation, when Christ is going to finish the work in us. We can't finish our work here on earth in terms of the things that we have to do for the six days we should labor and do all thy work. But God can certainly finish in us as he recreates us to make us fit for heaven. And so that, that's just something I wanted to put in there. I think it's, it's something that ties in nicely in terms of work and rest in the Sabbath day. But we're coming to the end of our study for today. we got to wrap it up. I want you to read for us, Elder Gordon, Luke chapter 13, verse 13 to 16. Luke 13, verses 13, 14, 15, and 16. And then I'll ask a question in reference to the text that was read. Luke chapter 13, verses 13 to 16. Luke 13, 13 to 16. And he laid his hands on her. And immediately she was made straight and glorified God. And the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation because that Jesus had healed on the Sabbath day and said unto the people, there are six days in which men ought to work. In them, therefore, come and be healed and not on the Sabbath day. The Lord then answered him and said, thou hypocrite, doth not each one of you on the Sabbath lose his ox or his ass from the stall and lead them away to watering? And art not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan had bound, lo, these 18 years, be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath day? So now the question, Elder Gordon, is that here is it, we just read that account about Christ healing a woman that was all bent over by the adversary for all these years. And he healed her. He perfected her. He, he recreated her. What is the point that Christ was making to, to those onlookers about the Sabbath day and what we can and, or can't do or what we should do on the Sabbath day? Elder God. We ought to do good on the Sabbath day, ministering to those who are mourning, those who are grieving, those who are bound. And as I went to Luke chapter 4 early on, this was exactly Jesus' message. He said, the spirit of God is upon him on the Sabbath. And what was his message? To preach good tidings to the poor, to set at liberty those who are bound. So what Jesus actually did was to translate the sermon into something relevant, and that is to heal those who are bound. Satan had this woman trapped for 18 years, and on the Sabbath, God was teaching a lesson here that God was telling them it is good to do good. It is good to minister to those who are sick. It is good to feed those who are hungry. And, and, and you notice what he said? But didn't you lose your act? Didn't you lose your animals so that they can be fed, so that they can gaze around in the, in the grass and get their water? Well, why if the animals can be loose on the Sabbath to be fed and to be watered, why should a woman, why should human beings be kept captives on the Sabbath? God says, no, we are to go and minister as he ministered to others. Excellent. Thank you so much. Now, Elder David, we are coming to a close and we looked at the Sabbath today. We, we can spend weeks or months dealing with this topic, much less to say that we just have just one morning to look at it. But it's just an introduction this week, Elders Gordon and David, for the lesson that is going to be coming throughout the rest of the quarter. So this is just basically a primer on overview. But nevertheless, there's a question here that the, the study gives, and I'm going to read it verbatim so you could give a response, Elder David. It says, by resting on the Sabbath day, how are we experiencing the rest and salvation that we have in Jesus now, and that which will be fulfilled ultimately in the creation of the new heaven and the new earth. Okay, the Bible says that the wages of sin is death. After Adam and Eve sinned, we all were condemned. We were on death row, as it were. But Jesus having come and died for us, 
we are now free from that guilt we are resting in Jesus we have received salvation even though we have not actually received it tangibly as yet but I have the assurance now I can rest assured in the fact that Jesus came and died and my salvation is secured when once I stay connected to Jesus that work of recreation which he started will be completed and I will receive salvation and I will inherit eternity the heaven that God has gone to prepare for me so I can rest now because Jesus has died for me and my salvation is assured once I stay resting I will eventually uh, inherit it excellent and just tell us today um, as we look forward towards the entire quarter that's ahead of us what are your expectations or anticipations for the study of the book of Genesis as we do so for this quarter Elder David um Genesis as I understand it the entire Bible Genesis serves as a foundation for everything that follows and I anticipate that as we continue to study we're going to see more and more Jesus and his love for us revealed in a more clear way because you know Jesus is the central character of the Bible and I anticipate that Jesus and his love will be made clearer to us as we proceed through Genesis excellent thank you so much elder David elder Gordon what is your anticipation for this quarter coming up in terms of studying Genesis I am just looking forward to seeing God's amazing grace to see that although mankind, I am so stubborn in sin, rebellious, turn against God, that yet still his arms are always reaching out, going way down and taking us up, dusting us off and just embracing us, having a new Sabbath, a new heaven to place us once we remain faithful. Excellent. But folks, there you have it. This is the Sabbath that we looked at on today's study. It's just basically an overview and a preamble as we go into Genesis fully into the next week and throughout this quarter. I want to thank certainly Elders um, Gordon and David for being with us, ever faithful and always here to uh, study with us the Word of God and to bring insights and foresights into the Word. So Elders, we thank you so much for being with us today. And you folks who are watching, we thank you for your commitment, for your continued viewing of Whispering Hope. And may God bless you as you continue to study his word. Let him be your guide. And we just pray for all of our soul salvation. And one day, according to Revelation, we shall stand on the sea that look like glass. And we rejoice with our God forever. Until next time, thank you once again for viewing. May God bless you. Hello, I'm Vaughn Joseph. I want to thank you so much for uh, being a part of this new channel that I've created, Victory in Jesus. It's a channel that will be bringing forth uh, weekly presentations for individuals to be assisted and to be encouraged in their spiritual walk with Christ. Starting uh, this week, we are going to be commenced IBV which is into the Bible verse. I will take a particular Bible verse or two and uh, bring the application towards our modern day life as we live today. I pray that this will be an inspiration to you and that you will continue to be a part of Victory in Jesus and indeed into the Bible verse with more programs to come. So like, subscribe and share to this YouTube channel. Share with your friends as we go into the Bible verse and as we claim victory in Jesus in our lives today. Thank you once again and may God bless you.